The CRC, Cyclic Redundancy Check, sometimes called a Cyclic Redundancy Code, is a far more powerful error detection mechanism than a simple checksum. The mechanism works the following way. Thinking about a hardware implementation, there's a shift register. Bits from the message are shifted into the register one bit at a time, with a low bit of the shift register XORed with a message bit, and then fed back into various stages of the shift register. All the boxes, each box is a bit, is set to an initial value, and then for every incoming message bit, the entire set of boxes is shifted one bit to the right. The bit popping out the bottom is XORed with a message bit that's coming in and gets fed back to mix with the other bits, including being put into the top box of the shift register. If you have a 64-bit message, then this shift register is shifted 64 times, once for each bit of the incoming message. The accumulated result in the shift register is the error code value, sometimes called a frame check sequence FCS for network messages. From this picture, you can see the red arrows are where the message shift register value is combined with the bottom bit and then XORed back in to various stages of the shift register. That performs mixing to scramble the bits as you go. An interesting thing about CRCs is even though this hardware mechanism clearly does some mixing with the feedback in the XORs, there's some actual math behind what's really going on here. The math is based on polynomial division. The way to conceptualize this is that the shift register has binary values in it, those are the data bits inside the boxes, but also has a feedback polynomial where a one in the binary polynomial value corresponds to a place where the feedback is inserted into the shift register, and a zero corresponds to a place in the shift register where there is no feedback and the bit is simply transferred from a box on the left to the box on the right. In this picture, the red arrows into the feedback correspond to ones in the polynomial shown at the top. There are many different polynomial choices, and this is simply one value. There are other possible values. In this case, if you look at the binary number represented by the feedbacks, 10110100001, hexadecimal B41, that corresponds to a polynomial of x to the 12th plus x to the 10 plus x to the 9 plus x to the 7 plus x plus 1. The 1 is actually an implicit value that is not shown in that hex value, and the plus 1 is the feedback of the message shift register at the end. This is a polynomial that you can factor, as you may have had in math class, and you can notice that if you break it up into its factors, there's a factor of x plus 1, where x plus 1 implicitly means that there's a parity computation. So if you have a polynomial used for a CRC and it has a factor of x plus 1, in other words, it's evenly divisible by x plus 1, you know that the result will detect all odd number of bit errors, just as if there had been an explicit parity bit. Where the math comes in, is what you're really doing is you're representing the message also as a polynomial. So if it's a 64-bit message, it's either 0, 1 times 2 to the 64, plus 0, 1 times 2 to the 63, and so on. If you represent both the feedback as a polynomial and the message as a polynomial, then you can think of a CRC calculation as doing a polynomial division of the message divided by the feedback and the value that's in the CRC shift register at the end is the remainder of the division. The CRC calculation is doing a polynomial division over Galois field 2, which for our purposes means that it follows Boolean algebra rules instead of integer arithmetic laws, and the resulting remainder is the error code. The feedback polynomial selection matters. Some polynomials are good for error detection, and some are really bad. Some of the bad ones include commonly used international standards, so you cannot simply say, well, this polynomial is popular, so it's good. That's not always true. There are also some rules of thumb that may be true but are misguided. For example, there's a common rule that you always want x plus 1 divisibility to get high Hamming distances, and that's simply not true. X plus 1 always gives you parity, but sometimes getting parity actually makes it a lot harder to get a good Hamming distance. Despite many years of mathematical approaches trying to derive good polynomials, 
for Hamming distances higher than four, the most effective way to find a good polynomial is brute force search of trying all the polynomials to see which one does best.